Okay, how are you doing? I know that it was a long night, that maybe you didn't sleep a lot, but we need you with more energized, okay? Because we have still a long uh, morning. So we go to the second panel now. This is uh, for a free Europe. And we will call three uh, young leaders uh, to the stage. So it's Mette Frederiksen, Lodewijk Asher, and John Krambes. Yeah. I did the first yeah. Yeah. Hello. Welcome. I do the introduce John. So I will introduce John Krambes. He is a young Europe, uh, um, leader of the Flemish Belgium party. And he will help us on the next 26th of May to win Brussels as the heart of Europe and also to win Belgium. <laughs> <coughs> And we have the young Ludwig Asher, an experienced minister and leader of the Dutch Labour Party and the man who has given us Timmermans. Yeah. <laughs> and finally we have Meta Frederiksen, she is the leader of the Social Democratic Party in Denmark. They also have elections next spring, so with all our support, hopefully we will have a new social democratic country in Europe, and especially a new woman in the European Council. So, the question is for John now. How can we ensure sufficient investment in efforts against climate change and for social protection without burdening the people's net income and their monthly bills? The floor is yours. Thank you for that. It's, uh, it's great being in Lisbon because it has been a while that they called me young. And I like that a lot. And um, uh, it's also good being in Lisbon while the conservative right-wing government in Belgium is slowly trying to fall. They're doing that this weekend. We'll try to be back in Brussels before they fall, but they will. Um, and falling on the discussion of migration. And we see that there's some tendencies that evolve very quickly on the same couple of questions. There's lots of people with low income who are not reaching the end of the month. And social democrats in the past where there were big crises and people were anxious came with very, very specific solutions. When 90 years ago there was a, a worldwide big economic crisis, we introduced social security systems. And conservative and liberal governments said, well, it's impossible, it's going to make the economy fall. But after we did it, the economies, they grew. People had more security. There were contributions for their pensions, for their unemployment. They didn't need to save themselves for difficult times. So they were building something. And each and every time that social democrats change the system, right-wing and conservatives say, it's bad for the economy. But the bad thing for us is that 10 years ago we had a big banking crisis. 80 years after the, the crisis of 1929, we had a big banking crisis. And now people have the impression, as Jeffrey Sachs said, that the money went to those who were already rich. And if we need these investments, social investments, durable investments, long-term investments, we should come with specific proposals that ensure that it's not the workers with a low income who pay the price. That's what we should do. But how? How means that we still, and that's my personal opinion, we had the resolutions, we still have a huge task of coming with solutions to the people. The objectives that we formulate, and we formulate them a lot, they're okay. But... How will we make them credible? How will we explain that these people who also want a better climate, lower bills, paying the schools for their kids, that they will not suffer from what is coming next? 
our solutions are not yet specific and concrete enough. If the big question is, who's paying the taxes for the moment in Europe? More than 50% of all taxes are on labor. For the moment in Europe, about 30% of the taxes are on consumption. Lots of them also on labor, on salaries, on wages, and only 20% on capital. And so that means, if we have our proposals to the Euro European voter next year, we should be very, very specific on how we will make the capital pay. Not the low-income workers, but the capital should pay. And I think... <laughs> and I think we should be honest to each other in the next coming months, making these proposals specific, that if we're vague about it, if we're not specific about it, they will not listen. We have a great history, and we should even talk more about it. But at this stage, we're lacking credibility to convince the voters that we will make it work. They want better air for their children, they want better schools for their children, they agree with our objectives, but we have to make sure that we convince them that the way to get there is so specific that we will succeed. We have to change an economic system where a market elite is in power. They have to be convinced that we will never be part of that market elite. And so I'll wrap it up here because we should always start with what we can really do ourselves. And I think in the entire Congress that we had, it's a good Congress, but there's still not enough women on stage to speak. And so, contrary to what, to what I normally do, I'll be brief <laughs> and stop here. So let's be very specific on the propositions that we bring to the European people and convince them that the capital has to pay the climate change and the social investments. Thank you. So you have the minutes now. <laughs> Mette, in Sweden we're hoping to stay in government and it looks kind of good and we are counting on you in Denmark to go into government in the spring. And as you are a leader and as there will be priorities to be made, what is the most important issue, do you think, for the upcoming European elections? In one word, trust. I think, I think the most important object for us is to restore people's trust in the social democratic parties. Across Europe, people have lost their trust in political parties, in our institutions, and we have to admit also within the social democratic parties. Many people have lost faith in the promise that their children will look into a better life than themselves. I still strongly believe that social democracy holds the answers to the most difficult questions of our time, inequality, climate change, and the difficult situation regarding refugees and migrants. Unfortunately, many voters seem to disagree. Therefore, I think the most important job for us is to restore people's trust in us. And in many ways, the global development of the recent years, including what has happened within the European Union, has been a success. I mean, peace between old enemies, open markets, new and better jobs, economic growth, prosperity for the many. But globalization has shown its dark side as well. And to be honest, to some extent, I think we have failed to uphold the social contract that is the very foundation of the social democratic model of society. An effective private market and economy on the one hand, 
but always combined with a strong welfare state. As a result, inequality, insecurity rose, capitalism got sick. Free movement of capital and labor within the European Union has brought Europe together. All of us know that. But at the same time, we are also facing serious problems in the labor market with social dumping. And at the same time, as you said, John, the financial sector was let loose. In the end, leading to the financial crisis in 2008. And now, once again, greed is back. And this time, we need, as social democrats, to fight it. We need to regulate banks and stock markets. First of all, to restore people's trust in society. To restore people's trust in social democracy. And of course, no country can do this alone. Europe has to work together, find common solutions to common challenges. Two suggestions. I think the European Union should bring to an end the competition between member states on taxation. A common, a common flaw for corporation tax would be an important tool in this battle. Higher tax, tax, higher tax on Facebook, Google, Apple would be another important answer for us. And we also have to speak up saying that the free movement of capital, goods and labor never m must be misused to underpay workers. It has to meet an end. We also have to stop companies and individuals from hiding profit and fortunes. Such activities, as you said, Jeffrey, fuels the engine of inequality and it contributes to the loss of trust in our institutions. The same goes for short-term speculation, causing market instability. We need, as social democrats, to guide capital and investments in directions that actually create new jobs for normal people. And at the end, turning to what we consider as one of the most important questions, the migration crisis. Because we are facing a very difficult situation. On one hand, an extreme number of refugees who need our protection. On the other hand, an increasing number of young people from Africa who have set out to reach Europe, they want a better life. All of us know that we cannot help everyone in Europe. That being said, I think we all can agree that we are obligated to help more, to protect and help those in need. We cannot turn our back to the world, nor do we wish to. And I propose that the European Union, together with the international community, join forces to provide a historical boost to Africa. We have to fight the route. And we have to provide financial and technical support to the countries and to the organizations that receive the majority of the refugees. We have to ensure a, a, a secure and safe environment with proper health care, housing and education. Today, we have to admit that we are facing huge challenges of integration all across Europe. And dear friends, we also have to acknowledge that migration poses challenges. The pose and scale of migration to Europe defines how well we can integrate the new members of society. And we do need integration because we need a strong social cohesion and it has to be maintained. 
I think that uh, the European Parliament elections in 2019 is a vote on the future courses, uh, the future course of the European Union. All social democratic parties have a common goal of fighting the rising inequality and insecurity and always helping those in need. I'm sure that the European people long for a social democratic answer to the great questions of our time. And I think all of us know that the only and that the strongest currency in politics is trust. Let's deliver it together. So, hello, Ludovic. You, like our common candidate, come from Netherlands, a country which is a reference in terms of freedom. So, in this sense, what does freedom mean for us as social democrats, and what does freedom mean for you? Well, my grandparents were liberated from the Nazi camps in 1945, and they had to look for each other, traveling through the ruins of Europe, a scattered continent. They were reunited in Maastricht, and they would never have believed how free we are today, how much progress has been made, how wonderful it is to be alive in Europe today. But in all honesty, I want my grandchildren to look back at this day and say we made progress. Because what is it to be free in Europe now? It's not the freedom of the markets. It's the real freedom. It's the right to be free from poverty. And I applaud Antonio Costa, who is delivering that in Portugal today. And real freedom in Europe today is the right to love whoever you want to love. So we, social democrats, must stand up for the right of every human being to love whoever he or she wants to love. LGBTQ rights are our rights, our European rights, and we are going to defend them. <laughs> to be free, to be free in Europe is the right of every person to equal treatment. Women's rights are our rights, our European rights, our progressive rights. They are under attack and we are going to defend them. Everybody has the right to equal treatment in this continent. That's 2018 for you. And everybody who wants to hear that, meet the Social Democrats, meet Frans Timmermans. He will stop you because we have something to be proud of. Freedom in Europe today means you have the right to be free from racism, xenophobia, anti-Semitism. Ghosts from the past will not be accepted. We're free in Europe. And to be free in Europe today also means we have a right to trust in government, the right to fight corruption, the right to the rule of law that protects each and every one of us against wrong government. So we will defend the rule of law as European rights in Europe in this election. And yes, what does it mean to be free in Europe? What do we want it to be, to be free in Europe? We used to look at the United States as the leader of the free world. And we were hopeful. We heard Jeffrey Sachs. But right now, they're not leading. We need Europe to lead the free world. To show that freedom can only be real if it's not the fake freedom from the markets. If it's not the freedom for the rich, Mr. Macron, but freedom for all. Freedom to be yourself freedom to live together, freedom to build a better world. I'm sure, dear Congress, our future is bright. Our future is progressive. Our future is social democratic. We're going to win elections again, and we're going to show that freedom is a European value, and we'll never drop it, we'll defend it, and we will show the electorate that our future is much better than our past with the social democrats, with Frans Timmermans. Let's win the election. <laughs>